Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. It is my excellent pleasure to be joining you also for Horse Center. Yes, and it looks like you have a different background, Matt. I assume you're headed to Saratoga soon. Yes, I am at the farm about, oh, 45 minutes east of Saratoga doing the show at the farm since, hey, they got internet out here after all these years. And internet is so, Okay. Well, the, the cows finally helped you out. Hey, Matt, let's, uh, before we start our race of the week, which of course is the Whitney, a big Whitney at Saratoga, let's go back to Saratoga last weekend, last Saturday, because I thought it was an important race, that Jim Dandy. I know it plays uh, a little brother to the Travers later in the meet, but uh, we saw four horse field, but we saw a pretty interesting uh, Jim Dandy with uh, with only four horses, four good horses, and Epicenter was definitely the best of the four. He was for sure, Brian. Uh, and yeah, it was four good horses. And um, I, I don't know if the race played out the way people were supposing that it played, was going to play out with, uh, yes, early voting went to the lead and got the lead and, and got a comfortable lead. A lot of people were expecting Epicenter to be up closer and say, hey, I can't let that horse uh, uh, get away and, and give him a, a comfortable lead. Well, he got loose and had a comfortable lead. And Joel Rosario said, hey, I think I got the best horse. I'm just going to ride my horse. Took him back to fourth place. And and it was an impressive victory uh, uh kudos to rosario to and that, and that's joel you know he he rides the race the way he thinks he should with the way he feels uh, um hell or high water you know if he, he's wrong sometimes and people don't like it but he was very right this time epicenter was the best horse in the race matt uh, no traffic trouble in a four horse field and uh, yeah no i was one of the people that thought epicenter would be much closer early voting early but he was dead last and early voting had an easy lead early voting ran finished dead last the preakness winner a little bit disappointing although he wasn't beaten by all that much but epicenter clearly best zandon with a good return race in his first race since the derby but now oh for three against epicenter and tawny pork the i guess the long shot of the field ran another solid race uh, for trainer brad cox setting up a very good travers now certainly headed by epicenter yeah, without question. And, and you know, earlier in the, uh, the year on the Kentucky Derby Trail, it was all about Epicenter. Um, and he got a little bit forgotten after his very good performances in the Derby and in the Preakness. And, and now he's back and, and deserves to be uh, one of the favorites heading into the Travers. Yeah, I would go as far as to say he is the favorite heading into the Travers. He sure looked like it on Jim Dandy Day. Now, we have a big race at Saratoga, of course, a big card, uh, several uh, nice races at Saratoga. But we're going to focus on the Whitney this week, Matt. And it really, you know, if you added flight line to this list, I, I, I think we'd have uh, many of the best older horses in the country. But we still do have really good older horses here life is good olympiad hot rod charlie a couple more from todd fletcher american revolution and happy saver and of course that super claimer zoomer to round out the whitney but let's uh, let's start from the rail out matt american revolution i'm not sure he's going to run a very good new york bread he took a step forward in his second race of the year last time when he was second to olympiad in the stephen foster and i and i do want to reiterate, there was a lot of talk yesterday at Saratoga and at the draw um, from, uh, uh, and actually Elliot Walden from Windstar. Uh, they've got two horses entered, and it seemed like there was a pretty significant chance that American Revolution might not run uh, in the Whitney, but I think it's going to be more of a close to a game, you know, a, a game day decision with that one. But yeah, American Revolution. Uh, won that cigar mile at the end of last year got a grade one and most recently was second in the foster behind the streaking olympiad right cigar mile winner as a three-year-old new york bred three-year-old winning the cigar mile that that that's news in itself obviously a talented horse he he ran a so-so return race in the blame at churchill downs but then came back and ran a much better race 
went second to Olympiad. I, I, I don't think he's the type, despite his one big win coming at a mile, I don't think he's the type where distance is going to bother him. Certainly a nine furlongs, but maybe even up to 10 furlongs. I just don't know if this is a great spot for him down on the rail with all these horses who have a little bit more speed than him. Uh, seems like a tough spot, but if he runs, if he doesn't wait for the Jockey Club Gold Cup against an easier group a little bit later in the meet, uh, he's certainly a horse to consider. The number two, I think, is a little bit more than that, Matt. That's Hot Rod Charlie. Hot Rod Charlie, of course, has been around for a couple years now. He famously ran a big second as a huge long shot in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile back at Keeneland. I say I emphasize Keeneland there because the Breeders' Cup is returning to Keeneland this year. Hot Rod Charlie ran some good races over in Dubai, Matt, before coming back with, I guess, a disappointing loss last time at Monmouth Park. Yeah, I guess it's how you want to view that race at Monmouth Park. You know, we've talked about we've talked about it on the show enough times that I, I, I really don't like horses when they first come back from uh, uh, racing in the Middle East. No matter how much time they've had off, I, I tend to discount them and, and, and uh, worry about their first start back. So if you look at that, yeah, I guess you could be disappointed. Uh, he, he lost the stretch battle to mind control the very game and gutsy mind control. Uh, um, but keeping in mind what I said, it was his first back from the Middle East. So that second place performance was, you know, uh, I think was okay. There might be critics that are saying he's starting to pile up some second place finishes um, and, and and has found trouble for himself in the past. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens uh, in this second race back, is he going to move forward? Um, which he certainly possibly can't, could be. Flavian Pratt, who has basically been his regular rider, gets back on board after Mike Smith rode him at Monmouth Park. Yeah, actually, I think there's a lot to like here. And I think the loss, the unexpected loss in the Salvatore Mile will add to his odds nicely in here where he will be uh, clearly the third choice behind the top two favorites. Uh, I thought it was good prep. He gave a bunch of weight. It was his first race back, as you as you mentioned there. But uh, he also probably lost a little bit of concentration in the stretch. He'll have blinkers on again uh, for the Whitney after not having blinkers in the Salvatore Mile. But first race back in mind control, people forget he's a multiple grade one winner who's who's really good at a mile. Seven furlongs in a mile is, is mind control's game. So... I think it was a really good prep, actually, for the Whitney, even though he got beat. And people hate to see horses getting beat nowadays, but uh, this was the goal for Hot Rod Charlie, the summertime goal for Hot Rod Charlie. And I think that Salvatore Mile sets him up really well. Next horse on the list, Matt, is Zoomer. Uh, you can say this about Zoomer. He was claimed. He's been claimed an awful lot. He gets claimed almost every race, it seems like, lately. But now he's in the Mark Cassie barn. You can say this about Zoomer. He has a nice nine furlong win over the track last out. Uh, and, and he's a horse that knows how to win. I think uh, 11 career wins. And you mentioned, yeah, I think he's been claimed six times in his last 10 starts. All high price claims, you know, 40,000, 50,000, 6,250 uh, uh, also. And and Mark Cassie, I don't know how much, how often he claims horses. but And this one for Gary Barber also. Uh, uh, just the other day, uh, reached in and took this guy for fifty thousand uh, dollars. A great kind of horse in the claiming market. Market, but boy, this is a uh, this is a tough start for uh, uh, Zoomer. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, Zoomer probably deserves a stake start. He ran in the Westchester a few starts back in between all those claiming races. But he probably deserves a stake start off that really, really nice win at Saratoga early in the meet. Unfortunately, he found probably the wrong stakes in this grade one. Whitney, number four on the list, Matt. Number four post position is Olympiad. Trainer Bill Mott has the son of Spitestown streaking. I think you called it earlier in the show. That, that means five straight wins, four of them, the last four being graded stakes races. Yeah, Brian, I think I might have heard stories about the streaking era back uh, uh brian and and maybe you being involved in it i don't, I don't know i i don't know uh yeah olympiad when the calendar turned to 2022 olympiad had it turned into a monster 
and has won five starts since then. Uh, beginning down in Gulfstream Park, he's got most recently wins in the uh, Stephen Foster and the Ali Sheba at Churchill Downs. Before that, a couple of graded stakes wins at uh, at fairgrounds. Um, certainly, Bill Mott knows how to get a. Uh, uh, an older male horse winning a lot of races in a row and an amazingly consistent horse in those five races. If you look at his past performances and the running lines in those past performances, Brian, almost every race, are, they're virtually identical. Uh, second for the first two or three calls and then taking over the race at the top of the stretch getting the lead and 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 drawing off to win amazingly consistent i don't know this may be as tough as a tough a spot when you consider that he's running into life is good now i don't think there's any doubt in the world that this is his toughest test to date uh, a horse who showed talent uh, at two and three he probably had a little bit of trouble in that cigar mile where he didn't run great late last year but this year he's been a monster five in a row it almost worries me about the running line being so consistent uh, seemingly he's had his way in all five of those starts interestingly he beat uh happy saver two starts back in american revolution last time at churchill downs uh, they're both in the field, but of course now we have Life is Good and Hot Rod Charlie. And it almost worries me because I don't know if it's all going to lay out quite as planned or as easily as it has in those five starts for Olympia because he has some pressure with him stalking Life is Good and Hot Rod Charlie. And then he's of course, has Life is Good, who is a whole different kind of speed horse that he'll be chasing this time. Uh, very interesting. You, you of course, alluded to Cigar. You didn't say Cigar, but you alluded to Cigar. Bill Mott having this horse on a winning streak as an older horse. Uh, it's possible Olympiad is the horse to beat for the Breeders' Cup Classic. That's how good he's been. That's how good he's been in Kentucky the last two starts. But he has to get over this hurdle. This is a big hurdle of the Whitney. Now, he could lose the Whitney and, lose, uh, and win the Breeders' Cup Classic, but uh, we want to see what Olympiad can do against true grade one horses. And we're gonna find out here in the Whitney. Number five is Happy Saver. Happy Saver, Matt, is the third from the Fletcher Barn, joining Life is Good in American Revolution, the fifth choice in the six horse field. A very classy horse who was able to win the Jockey Club Gold Cup as a lightly raced three-year-old uh, almost two years ago. He just hasn't broken through in stakes since, but on the other hand, I'm looking at his past performances, second in the Clark, uh, second in the Ali Sheba, second in the Met Mile. There's not a whole lot wrong with those running lines, but is it going to break through in a race like this? I don't know. But again, another really interesting set of past performances. We remember when this guy began his career and he won his first five races, and now he's got four second places in a row. And, and they're good second places, Bri. The, the, the most recently in the Met Mile when he was second behind flight line, of course. Um, so, yeah. Can he get, get back to the winner's circle? I think eventually he will, but you know, look at look at what he has to face in here. He hasn't been ducking the best, like we said, flight line last time, but now you got Hot Rod Charlie, you got Olympiad, you got Life is Good. Um, uh, uh, another really tough spot for a very, very good horse. A very good horse who, who maybe, you know, if that pace gets a little crazy up front can, can make a run uh in the stretch but um only like him fifth best in here i guess fourth best if american revolution's not in the race but uh, another tough spot for happy saver he of of course he didn't threaten uh flight line last time and and i guess he really didn't threaten well he did threaten olympiad in the uh ali sheba but olympiad was clearly the best the last 16th of a mile there at churchill dance Finally, we get to the six, the outside. Irad Ortiz Jr. will be on Life is Good, Matt. Life is Good was one of those horses that went overseas and uh, and, and ran in the Dubai World Cup. It was his uh, first, I guess, disappointing race of his career in that he faded to fourth. Uh, Hot Rod Charlie was one of the horses, along with Country Grammar, that beat him over in the Dubai World Cup, the 10 furlong Dubai World Cup on a track that probably wasn't uh, – 
wasn't playing very fast. It was kind of a tiring track there at Maidan in late March. But he came back with a very nice win, going seven furlongs, flashing that good early speed, seven furlongs in the John A. Nehrut at Belmont Park. Yeah, and, and and you mentioned the the fourth place in the Dubai World Cup. And, and besides that, the only loss that Life is Good has is a neck loss to the great sprinter Jackie's Warrior and, and coming off of a layoff last year. And I guess, you know, that's only flattered even more so with the way Jackie's Warrior is running now. Any any horse that can get within a neck of Jackie's Warrior off a layoff, playing his game uh, in a sprint like that, that was a heck of a race that he ran. And talk about another horse with consistent past performances, Brian. Uh, life is good is one of them. If you look at his running lines, again, like we said about Olympiad, amazing amazingly gets to the lead regardless of the distance whether it's you know uh, uh, whether it's a sprint whether it's the mile and an eighth in the pegasus world cup that he won uh, uh relaxes on the lead takes control of the race and 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 wins it uh wins it gate to wire so uh here we are in this uh in this whitney with the top two horses looking like the race could very well start out the same way with life is good on the lead and, and, and Olympia trying to stalk in second place, except you got that hot rod Charlie in there. Yeah. Hot rod Charlie with blinkers. Uh, life is good. This, this kind of reminds me of last year when Nick's go arrived at the Whitney and, and, and faced a very good field, but his speed was too much. Life is good. Just has controlling speed. It'll be up to, Horses like Hot Rod, very, very good horses like Hot Rod Charlie and uh, Olympiad to chase. And I think that's tough, especially at nine furlongs here. Uh, life is good, to, for my money, is the horse to beat with the controlling speed from an outside post. Irad Ortiz, you know he's going to move in uh, aggressively, let's say, as Irad tends to do. And uh, catch me if you can with Life is Good in the Whitney. Still a very interesting race with uh, a bunch of America's best older dirt horses, meaning at Saratoga, Saratoga sometimes can play uh, to be a, 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 a consideration uh, of that track, uh, can play a little bit different than some other tracks. So we'll see. The Whitney should be fun. Folks, I want to remind you, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here on Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that now. Matt and I sure do appreciate it. And on that uh, segue, Matt, we're going to jump over to Mountaineer Park, uh, West Virginia, Western, Western West Virginia. Not the easiest thing to say in the world, but uh, Mountaineer Park is hosting the West Virginia Derby. We weren't sure what was going to be our second race this week, but the West Virginia Derby, I think, came up pretty interesting, Matt Schiffman. Uh, we have a field of seven and uh, a bunch of them ran in triple crown races. And I think the horse that might end up the favorite is the horse that hasn't been running in the Triple Crown, his name is Home Brew. But interestingly, the Mountaineer odds maker, Morning Line odds maker, has him as the third choice. He says, "We the people," coming off a little bit of a disappointment when fourth in the Belmont as a seven to two shot in the Belmont. He's listed as the two to one favorite. Matt, the one thing We the People certainly has going for him is he has a lot of early speed. Yes, that's for sure. And we saw that uh, early speed on display. Uh, when he was prepping for the Belmont Stakes, and he won that Peter Pan convincingly, easily, easily by open lengths on a track that was uh, a, a good track, but it was sealed, a lot of moisture in it, and, and he certainly took to that, uh, tried to to use that speed, and, and maybe uh, steal the race in the Belmont Stakes, set the early fractions, but. Uh, um, uh, uh, couldn't couldn't keep it going and finish fourth in that race. Yeah, and that's a mile and a half, of course, the Belmont Stakes, yeah. as everyone knows. That's a mile and a half. This is a mile and an eighth. This seems more in line with We the People wants to do. Of course, a lot of people jumped on We the People as the lone speed in the Belmont, but uh, a mile and a half is tough. By the way, I, I like knowing when there's a son or daughter of constitution in the race. We saw it with American Revolution. Now we see it with We the People. You can always tell who's out of constitution. We the People on the lead here in the West Virginia Derby is what we suspect 
But I think homebrew, uh, Paco Lopez will be on him. Now, he's stalked the lead in those two nice stakes wins at Oaklawn Park and Monmouth Park last time. But I think with a quality speed horse like We the People, I, th- I see homebrew and Paco Lopez, the aggressive rider of Paco Lopez, going after We the People early. And uh, it, it's a class test. For homebrew, but I don't expect him to let we the people get away. Yeah, uh, uh, Paco certainly won't won't do that. It certainly is a little bit of a uh, uh, class test because you know we we didn't see him in any of the Triple Crown races as others. That Oakland Stakes, I guess, was is sort of a minor prep on the Derby Trail, but he's had he had a lot of time between races from that win in the Oakland Stakes until the Pegasus at Monmouth Park, but both of those were impressive uh, finishes. Again, he's taking time. Uh, That Pegasus at Monmouth was in June, and he hasn't run since then. I'm assuming that that that's what Homebrew needs, um, because, again, a little bit of a layoff afterwards for for Brad Cox. Yeah, a very interesting horse, a son of street sense, and Frankly, he's a horse that um, makes a lot of sense here in the West Virginia Derby. While Simplification, We the People, and Skippy Longstocking were running in legs of the Triple Crown, Homebrew was uh, developing, getting better, getting his confidence up, if you will. Uh, the, the, the one thing I worry about Homebrew, looking back at that Oaklawn race and the Monmouth Park race that he won so easily, the Pegasus, uh, there really wasn't much in either of those races. Looking at the horses that finished second, third, and worse, Homebrew has not beaten good horses yet, and there are good horses in this race. So that's something to think about. Homebrew, the horse I'm predicting will be the favorite. Another horse who needs to get that in here, of course, is Simplification. You could call Simplification the class of the race. Uh, I guess there's a few other horses that could take issue in that. But Simplification, uh, two-time stakes winner this year. He ran against really good horses in Florida, getting a win in the Fountain of Youth, running a very good race in the Florida Derby, the Grade 1 Florida Derby. And then he ran a very good race at Churchill Downs in the Kentucky Derby to be fourth there, Matt. Uh, the Preakness, I guess he bled, and that was his one real disappointing race of the year. Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, a horse that you and I both have talked, we both talked about a great deal on the Derby Trail for Antonio Sano. Um, yeah, I, I think he deserves to get a lot of attention at the windows, uh, talking about the class running in uh, two of the Triple Crown races and running so well in the in the Kentucky Derby. I hope th- I hope there's a, enough time between having bled in the Preakness and and uh, running in this West Virginia Derby, but it seems like a very good spot in which for him to come back. Yeah, it's about two and a half months since he bled and faded to sixth in the Preakness. Uh, Not a great race for simplification there, but certainly the bleeding uh, would be an excuse why he was uh, beaten less than 10 lengths, but not quite as good as many starts he made. Maybe he's the horse to beat in here. Trainer trainer Antonio Sano uh, seems to believe that he is uh, back and healthy and uh, working well for this uh, test in the West Virginia Derby. It's it's a good test. It's a $500,000 race and it drew horses who are eligible to go, come out of this and go straight to the Travers or perhaps the Pennsylvania Derby uh, at parks in September. Those are the three favorites. And yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy to decide who will be the favorite. I, I said homebrew, but I certainly could see Simplification or We the People getting bet quite a bit as well and maybe they would be the favorite skippy longstocking on the outside matt i don't think will be one of the top three on the odds board and the morning line maker seems to agree with me here he's at five to one i think that's interesting odds if you look at skippy longstocking he's faced mo donegal uh, a couple times early voting a couple times epicenter all in his last three races and uh now he I just said it was a very good field, but he drops down in class. You'd have to say that after the horses he's run off, run against in the last three races, and he's been pretty competitive. I thought his last race was his best yet, where he chased We the People and uh, beat We the People for third in the Belmont. If you look at his race four starts back, before all those monsters he faced, Mo Donegal, early voting, epicenter, so on, uh, was a nice rallying win in a nine-furlong allowance race. And, and that gives me hope 
in a race where I think there's going to be a, a decent pace in here and a track that you can rally on. That gives me hope for Skippy Longstocking in the West Virginia Derby. Yeah, I think that's completely reasonable because you you were talking about uh, fishing third in the Wood Memorial uh, behind uh, uh, behind the eventual Belmont winner uh, Mo Donegal and and fifth in the Preakness and then third again uh, in the Belmont Stakes, which you know was a surprisingly good performance. So uh, yeah, maybe this West Virginia is a little bit of an easier spot. Yeah, he's been double digits in all those races, the Wood Memorial, the Preakness, and the Belmont. He was th a good third in, in both of the New York ones. Safi Joseph, Safi Joseph has been winning again lately. I think it might be a good spot for Skippy Longstocking. Uh, the last horse I really want to mention in here, Matt, is King Ottoman. King Ottoman from uh, uh, another trainer who's been getting hot lately. That's Steve Asmussen. King Ottoman has only won one race. It wasn't a maiden race, though. It was the Texas Derby. Uh, down on the rail, he made a move in the Indiana Derby, but couldn't sustain it in the stretch and finished third in the Indiana Derby. This is his toughest test to date, but Son of Curlin could move forward off of that effort in Indiana. Yeah, and, and you, you said it. Uh, uh, who's hotter than uh, the Steve Asmussen barn? We, you know, for a couple shows in the past, we were talking about how hot Brad Cox's barn was. Clearly, that's shifted over to Asmussen with the big wins at at saratoga and, and this is this is uh you know a nice horse with that texas derby win and the third place in the indiana derby sounds like you know these mid-major derbies he fits right in uh moving over to west virginia yeah anybody else you want to talk about of the of the long shots in here man nope i don't okay Cor corvus there is a really well-bred stakes winner but uh, his last two were not good I, I could see him developing into a nice horse but it's hard to get on his bandwagon here and JR's gift is a big long shot. Matt, it's that time again where we uh, we put the pedal to the metal a little bit and, and ask you for your top selections here. I'll give mine as well for the two races we looked at, the Whitney grade one million dollars from Saratoga and the half a million dollar West Virginia Derby from Mountaineer. All right, am I starting, Brian? Whitney, Whitney, Matt, you're up. Whitney starting, well, Brian, uh, uh, this horse has been uh, training really, really well. This horse loves to train, but he's continued to train really well up at Saratoga for the Todd Pletcher barn. Uh, um, I think life is good. It's just too good for this field, even though it's a really good field. I can see him uh, once again doing what he does, uh, uh, going out to the lead, and then Hot Rod Charlie and Olympiad maybe knock heads in second place right next to each other. Um, uh, and life is good is my Whitney pick. Matt, you chalk-eating weasel, you're on the favorite again. I am your weasel brother in eating chalk this time, Matt. I, I agree with you. Life is good. We're both on the favorite in the Whitney. I just think that controlling speed is uh, is is so dangerous, and and I think that's what will carry the day in the Whitney, much like it did last year with Nick's go in the Whitney. I think, unfortunately, Hot Rod Charlie, who I think will run a very good race with some decent odds for a change, and Olympiad have the uh, the difficult task of chasing. I think that takes them out of their game just a little bit to to try to stay in touch with life is good and then make a move on life is good. I think it sets up well for life is good to win the Whitney Matt. How about the West Virginia Derby? I think it came up pretty nice and it's an interesting betting race. It is a little bit tougher to handicap and an interesting betting race, um, particularly because, you know, we talked about it already being not being sure who is going to be the favorite. Will it be we, the people, will it be homebrew? Will it be a simplification? I, I think it could be any of those. Uh, regardless, I guess, Brian, whoever is going to be the favorite is not going to be a particularly heavy favorite like uh, Life is Good will be uh, in the Whitney. Um, I'm going to go with uh, with Homebrew in here. Yeah, I know he's making a little step up in class. I was hoping that the odds maker would be correct and that Homebrew – will not be the favorite that the simplifications class and and he seems to think we the people um 
I guess I won't be real happy if homebrew ends up being the favorite, but I'm going with homebrew. Yeah, yeah. Homebrew, like you said, I don't think there's a heavy favorite in here. Homebrew will be one of the ones they're betting. I just think the Brad Cox two straight wins factor might make him the favorite, and he certainly has a shot to win. Like I said, there's a lot pointing to homebrew in the West Virginia Derby, but I, I think the top four, maybe even the top five, all have a pretty almost equal shot to win. And because of that, I'm, I'm looking for a horse with a little bit more odds. I'm also feeling a rally here at Mountaineer. I used to call it Mountaineer Park, but I, I know it's casino and, and, and racetrack or something along those lines now. I've, I've seen horses rally at this track, and, and I think maybe Home Brew and We the People and maybe even Simplification, although he's he's kind of an epicenter type. We don't know if he's going to be near the lead or coming from back. But I know Skippy Longstocking will be rallying in the stretch. I think nine furlongs will suit him. I'm feeling a rally, Matt, so I'm going Skippy Longstocking the likely fourth choice to win the West Virginia Derby. All right, folks, that's it. That's the show. But before we go, we need a party shot from you, my friend, Matt Shipman. Absolutely, Brian. Uh, um, uh, looking forward to going to Saratoga again this afternoon and, and the Whitney uh, uh, great race, uh, as we talked about. I, either way, enjoy the big races at, uh, uh, at Saratoga. And out at Mountaineer Park, where they've got a big load of stakes races out there, seemingly, uh, I don't know, it seems like maybe it's a civics class lesson uh, with the names of those uh, uh, stakes races. Regardless, Brian and I appreciate that you're watching the show. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Matt, we, we talked about the Whitney. Uh, Saratoga has a gaggle of good races uh, even before Saturday this weekend. So enjoy that. Del Mar, Clement Hirsch, uh, and other stakes races. West Virginia Derby has a nice supporting uh, cast as well. So a great weekend of racing, as is often the case this summer, folks. Uh, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. We also appreciate Candace Curtis, our friend, for the race graphics. And Derby Wars, the best contest site out there, folks. We'll be back next week. I think, Matt, we're going to talk about the Arlington Million next week. I just don't know where they're going to run it. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you soon right here on Horse Center.